Hey guys, Jamie Filer from Muscle Insider here, um, online editor-in-chief, managing editor. I was doing some research um, for the upcoming issue, which is issue 28. Um, I'm the one that writes the in the zone columns. Uh, I don't know if you've seen them, but they're these little tidbits. We usually have fat loss, supplements, and health. And we always give you three tidbits based on uh, recent scientific research about how to improve your health, um, what kind of supplements to use, and um, how to improve fat loss. So I read something super interesting today when I was doing my research and it was about protein needs for fat loss or specifically what, um, how much protein will can, thank you, shields of strength, um, how much protein can almost help contribute to fat loss. So I want to tell you about this journal article. Um, it was done by Jose Antonio and it was published in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition, so the JISSN, which is super reputable. Um, Jose Antonio is also out of Nova Southeastern University in Florida. So with that said, um, the study was as follows. They took 48 people who, were, who had history of weight training, so it's not you know, newbies, it's not obese people, it was 48 recreational bodybuilders who had been training for years, all of whom were on a diet of about two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So what if two grams per kilogram of body, right, two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Okay, so what the scientists had them do is they cut the 48 people in half and they told 24 of them to stay on the diet they were doing and they told the other 24 to increase their protein drastically. And what that ended up being was they went from uh, two grams, cut the people in half, no, silly, um, cut the groups of people in half. Um, so sorry, so the 24, so 24 people ended up with two grams and uh, two grams again per kilogram of protein of body weight. And the other 24 ended up at 3.4. And now here's where things get interesting. After eight weeks, I should also say that with an increase of 3.4 grams from two, you're also gonna get a huge, thank you, thank you for the terminology. Um, you're also gonna get a huge increase in calories. Okay, so now we have these 24 people who increased their protein needs, who also increased their calories, and after eight weeks ended up losing more fat. Um, I think the, yeah, with increased, sorry, they lost, a total of, I wanna make sure I get this right. They lost 2.6 kilograms over the course of eight weeks as opposed to the other group, which only lost 0.6 kilograms. Hi. Um, and that's a significant difference. When you think about the fact that they increased their calories by 400 a day, they still lost body fat. The other thing to say is that neither group gained more lean body mass despite the increase in protein. Hey everybody, I'm from Toronto. Um, so I think that's just a really interesting observation that one group stayed at two grams, one group went to 3.4, no group gained any more lean body mass than the other group, but the one that increased their protein lost 2.6 kilograms in only two months. Um, so it's just, goes to show the, the thermogenic effect of protein and how switching up your macronutrients in your diet really makes a difference for fat loss. Um, if I read anything else that's super interesting, then I will let you know. Do I wear a fitness tracker to track how many calories I burn in a workout? Um, no, I don't. Uh, mostly because I don't care how many calories I burn in a workout. Um, my trainer is just programs for me and I do what he tells me and I weigh in once a week. And if I'm losing weight, he bumps up my calories because that's not my goal. And if I'm gaining weight, um, then he takes them down a little bit. But no, I do not use a fitness tracker. Um, while I'm here, do you guys have any more questions for me? I didn't think I was actually gonna get a live question. Um, but if you wanna ask me anything, I guess uh, I guess I can stick around. No, it wasn't lame. That was, that's fine. I thought it was funny and I appreciate that someone corrected me and said divide it into groups. That, makes much more sense than cut in half. What do I think of the ketogenic diet? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, I recently saw a documentary about a guy who was using or is currently using the ketogenic diet to help 
cure uh, childhood epilepsy. Um, and I know that sounds kind of random and doesn't really apply to Muscle Insider viewers who are just like, you know, muscle building and fat loss, but that obviously goes to show that there are some benefits in terms of health. Like he's actually shown through his foundation that the ketogenic diet can cure epilepsy. Um, so if that doesn't say something about um, how effective it can be, then I don't know what does. In terms of its efficacy for fat loss, I've used it personally. Um, when I was dieting for bodybuilding shows, um, and it gets tough, like not eating carbs for someone who is a sweet tooth, it's really rough. So if you can handle a ketogenic diet, absolutely go for it. If it doesn't affect your performance, also go for it because I always think performance is paramount. Um, but that's just my opinion. So yeah, if you can, if you can handle uh, the low carb diet, go for it. What are your top recommendations for supplements? Um, I guess it would be depends on your budget. Um, my top three would be a whey protein, um, BCAAs, and a pre-workout. Um, whey protein because there is nothing better for muscle building and also because if you go back about 10 minutes into this periscope, you'll see that it also has benefits for fat loss. Um, BCAAs because I believe they're ideal to take intra-workout but also post-workout um, to help with muscle building. And um, someone who's insulin sensitive. Can you ask me that again once I finish this last one? Yes, isolate protein, 100% isolate protein. Um, concentrate is okay, and again, it depends on your budget, um, but I definitely believe that isolate is the way to go. Way to go. See what I did there? Um, and then the last one, a pre-workout. Okay, so for a lot of people, this isn't necessary but I'm giving you my personal recommendation. I work out early in the morning and um, I'm gonna admit that I slack because I'm just getting up. I have a full day of work ahead of me and working out is always the first thing I do. Thank you for all the hearts, guys. Um, if I don't have a pre-workout and I don't get that tingly feeling and I don't get hyped up before a workout, it will be a shitty workout. I assure you it'll be a shitty workout. So. Um, for all of you people who either come off shift work and go straight into training or just have to do this before cla uh, before either class or work, I highly recommend a pre-workout. Whether it's stimulant-free or stimulant-based, just go for it. Um, okay, someone who says, what do you recommend for someone who's insulin sensitive? Do you mean in terms of a supplement or what kind of diet? Just don't get tight. Yeah, absolutely. That is the worst thing ever. Um, it if you've been working or in class long enough, you know your traffic route, you know what an appropriate time to take uh, it is after work. Diet-wise for someone who is insulin sensitive. Um, that's tough. Probably, oh, okay, probably carbs around your workout. Um, Lane Norton has been uh, a huge advocate of this forever, um, and I'm a huge fan of Lane Norton. He schedules the majority of your carbs before and after workouts. Um, so I guess in your case, maybe don't take too many pre-workout and make sure you take the majority of them um, after workout. Uh, I've seen him recommend as much as 30 to 35%. You had a dentist appointment on a pre-workout? That must have been awful, dude. I am so sorry for you. Um, back to the insulin sensitive guy. Again, uh, if you track your macros and you track your percentages, try and have about 30 to 35% of your carbs immediately post-workout um, and see if that makes a difference. And then you can try also having 30% pre-workout, again, depending on, on how many uh, grams of carbs you get per day, and see if that changes your workout um, and also your absorption and your insulin and all that. Um, what are my thoughts on mTOR and BCAAs? I know about the mTOR pathway and how it is effective and how leucine kind of gets that process started. So I don't quite know what your question is. Um, in terms of mTOR pathways and muscle building, um, if I wanna give you guys a couple resources or people to check out on social media, um, Dr. Jeremy Lonicky, I think it's spelled L-O-E-N-N-E-K-E. -E. Um, he's like, he's the main guy f who researched, um, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Okay. Uh, blood flow resistance. 
sorry, you know when you put like a tourniquet around your arm and then train or a tourniquet around your quad and then train? Um, that guy is an absolute brilliant mind when it comes to BFR training, um, but also the, all of the research he's done with the mTOR pathways. You tried the Lane Norton. Uh, if you gained fat, then it was probably a result of just too many calories, not necessarily, um, I, I guess, not necessarily the, the macronutrient percentages or when you had them relative to your workout. But I can see the only reason someone gaining fat is because of um, too, too little cardio and too much food, not necessarily the diet specifically. It's constipation ever a problem when cutting carbs? Absolutely. Absolutely, because I think, especially in bodybuilding, a lot of your carbs come from uh, fiber, from veggies. So if you're even um, trying to limit the amount of vegetables you have, then you're going to limit the amount of soluble and insoluble fiber you're consuming. And also, um, I mean, I know a lot of bodybuilders are now super into Quest bars and Be Up bars and the Muscle Tech um, Mission One bars. Uh, if you're cutting carbs, then you're going to take those 22 you know, quest bar grams out of your diet. And that's 17 grams of fiber you are no longer getting. So with that said, um, even on a ketogenic diet, you're allowed, I think 5%, um, like variable, but 5% of your total calories from carbs, make them from green veggies, make sure to get your fiber in. Um, so important. Any other questions? I really didn't expect this to last this long, but if you guys want, if you guys want more, I'll stick around. All right, cool. Um, have you heard of Corey Gregory? He's insulin sensitive. Okay, so that works for him. You can also try going in and around 20% of carbs, but I can assure you that um, he probably sticks them around his workout. Again, pre or post, um, you could always ask him. Guys, if you want to find me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter and ask me any of these questions, that's cool too. Um, either look up Muscle Insider and then find me or um, on Instagram, I'm J-A-I-M-9-1. J-A-I-M-9-1. Um, thank you so much for this amazing uh, Periscope session.